Welcome back to the Noxramus Raid Guide. In this video I'll be covering Gluth, the third boss in the Abomination Wing. My name's Ciderhelm from Tankspot, and like the rest of these videos, these are intended for full guilds and raids rather than just for tanks, so feel free to repost them to your guild forums. This is a healing and kiting encounter that requires a decent amount of coordination among everyone in the raid. Right now I'm going to show you the greats where the zombie chow will spawn because you won't get too much of a chance to see these in, uh, during the actual video, because Gluth is going to be blocking most of the screen. Zombie Chow are going to be coming out of each of these grates sequentially, and they do need to be picked up and they do need to be kited around the back of the room so they don't go off and attack the rest of your raid, so they don't get too close to Gluff, and I'll explain that momentarily. You do want to position your healer, who is, or your healers, who are most likely to get aggro during this, right around here, or a little closer to Gluff, who's going to be towards that door there. And you want to be laying down. Whoever's going to be kiting, you could have a paladin, you could have probably a warlock, you could have a maid, you could have a hunter. Uh, paladins work pretty well because they can lay down a consecration right about where the healers work. Hunters can also drop a frost trap, which is very helpful to kiting if they happen to be in the room. There's a fair amount of poison damage that goes on through this tunnel, so you do want to get through it pretty quick. It's easy enough to heal through, it's not too big of a problem, but it is annoying enough. And make sure your raiders don't fall off to the left. I'm going to go ahead and drop down. I'm going to move them to the back door there, which is closed at the moment. If you're com As a tank, if you're confident with your healers, you can go ahead and strafe all the way back. And strafing does give you a little bit of an advantage because it actually gets him closer to the door. And you want him to be as far away from the uh, zombie chow, which will be kited in the uh, back of the room as possible. Notice I do have my Feral Druid off tank here, uh, who is desperately in need of a new skin, as you'll see shortly. Well, as you can see right now, and as every Druid is very aware of. Hopefully Blizzard gets to that soon and makes it look pretty good. And as you'll see, I've got a stacking debuff. This is a Mortal Wound type of debuff. It's going to be adding 10% less healing. Uh, it's a debuff, and it stacks, and it'll stack to 10, and it'll eventually wear off on its own, but you don't want it to get to that point normally anyway. So the reason I have my druid here is so he can taunt off and let it wear off occasionally. And he's just done that. I'm playing around with the strafing here. I am a little too close, so it doesn't actually work when I taunt him back, but when you actually do it when you're pulling, it's not a problem. Now one thing you're going to see here, the bottom timer on my upper right, unfortunately I have my carbonite map up at the moment, uh, but the bottom timer there is going to be the decimate. When that moves over and when it actually ends, uh, he's going to go ahead and drop everyone's life and all the zombies' life uh, down to 5%. When that happens, everybody's going to have to turn around and kill all the zombies because the zombies will start walking to Gluth, and that's why you want Gluth on the far side of the room here. Uh, the zombies, once they reach him, he'll turn around, he'll eat them. Uh, any that do reach him, they'll turn around, he'll eat them, he'll regain health based on that. If he regains a little bit of health, it's fine. If he regains a lot, it's probably not. Uh, so you do want to make sure the kiting is as far back as possible once once they've gotten the hang of it. You'll notice also that he is enraging here. The enrage can be taken care of fairly easy, uh, easily with a hunter, and I may be mistaken, but I believe rogues or another class got the same thing as tranquilizing shot, and just with another ability. It's also not a big deal in the ten man. He doesn't deal significantly more damage during the um, during that enrage. He's just eaten a couple of the zombies, and he will walk away like that when that happens. We're going to go ahead and position him back here a bit. Be aware when you're kiting that sometimes one of these zombies will get by, uh, depending on your class especially, and if it does, it will most likely go for a healer, and when it does, you need to get it off them as soon as possible. The reason you don't want to have a tank on the zombies normally, or you do want to have a, if you're going to be taking the hits, you do want to have someone who can clear buffs or debuffs off of them, is because the zombie chow, when they do actually hit a target, they will start stacking a debuff, and that debuff causes each subsequent hit to hit for more. Uh, so that's something you do want to watch out for. You want to make sure you're kiting them and away from them as much as possible, and you want to make sure they don't stay on a healer too long. You'll notice he does have an enrage timer, so him actually eating these zombie chow, even if you are even if you are getting him down farther through each of these, if he eats too much of the zombie chow, you do lose the ability to beat that enrage timer. Uh, and if you actually reach the enrage, your raid obviously is most likely to wipe at that point, unless it's just a few seconds off from uh, actually killing him.
you can see in the back of the room a little bit of these zombie chow being kited around. Now, until I taunt him back and he moves his foot. One last note, the zombie chow has far too much life to actually be killed while they're up and while they're being kited. Uh, that's why the encounter revolves around bringing all these mobs, everybody, every player in the raid, as well as all these mobs, down to 5% health. Um, obviously, when the players go down healers, you've got to be on top of your game. You've got to make sure that the tanks get healed up right away after a decimate. But everybody in the raid, immediately when that 5% hits, all those zombies just became vulnerable. Their health is down to a reasonable amount. Everybody in the raid needs to turn around, make sure that they get AoE down, DPS down. Uh, everybody except for, say, the tanks, obviously, because you don't want to move Gluff closer to them. That's not a good thing. That's just about everything there is to the encounter. Uh, be creative with who you have kiting. As long as it's someone confident, they're likely to be able to do it. And thanks for watching this video guide. If you have any questions at all, uh, regardless of whether you're a tank or not, please stop by tankspot.com, go ahead and register, and ask away in the Project Marmot forums. Thank you.